Hello students, in the previous lecture I talked about Chaucer and his influence and his art of characterization and other things. This time I will talk about what happened after Chaucer. Chaucer was the morning star of modern poetry, modern literature. He is considered to be the father even of modern novel. But what happened immediately after Chaucer? Let's talk about this thing in this video. After Chaucer, there was a decline in English poetry for about 100 years. The years from 1400 to the Renaissance, I will talk about the Renaissance and its chief characteristics. So, these years were period bereft of literature. There were only a few minor poets, the imitators and successors of Chaucer, who, who, who are called the English and Scottish Chaucerians, who wrote during this period, during these hundred years. And uh, basically this was a barren period, but some poets who imitated Chaucer's, Chaucer were there. The main cause of the decline of literature during this period was that no writer of genius was born during those long years. Chaucer's successors were Lydgate, Howes, Skelton, Henderson, Dunbar and Douglas. They all did little but copy him and they represent an era of mediocrity in literature mediocrity in English literature in particular that continued up to the time of Renaissance. Now you will ask what Renaissance is? I will deal with this thing um, even in this lecture. Let us begin with Renaissance. The middle ages in Europe were followed by the Renaissance. What does Renaissance mean? Renaissance means the revival of learning, reawakening after a long slumber and it denotes in its broadest sense the gradual enlightenment of the human mind after the darkness of middle ages. So, this was a kind of reawakening after a long sleep, reawakening after a long slumber, long time of inactivity. With the fall of the Constantinople in uh, 1453 AD by the invasion of the Turks, the Greek scholars who were residing there, they left that place and spread all over Europe and brought with them invaluable Greek manuscripts. So, in, they went to Italy in particular. The discovery of these classical models resulted in the revival of learning in the 14th and 15th centuries. The people of Italy, they were you know surprised to see these great works and they thought that they should revive uh, the interest in these things. The essence of this moment revival was, was that man discovered himself and the man discovered the universe and that uh, man so long blinded had suddenly opened his eyes and started seeing all around. The flood of Greek literature which the new art of printing carried swiftly to every school in Europe revealed a new world of poetry and philosophy. So, there was uh, you know, uh, printing press was invented and um, the, the, the Greek literature spread in every part of Europe. So, there was a revival or an, and along with this revival, uh, the revival of learning, new discoveries took place in several other fields. America was discovered, India was discovered, North Pole, South Pole, many other places and new things were discovered. The end of the 15th century marks the end of the middle ages. Keep it in your mind. 
We now enter upon a new era, that of Renaissance. Before considering the literature of Renaissance England, we must first try to understand the new tendencies in the life and thought of English people that the Renaissance brought. So they became broad minded. They started thinking on various aspects of human life. Previously, they thought along the religious lines and they did not deviate from that. The Renaissance was a period in European history marking the transition from the Middle Ages to modernity, covering the 15th and 16th centuries. The Middle Ages were past and the old world had become new, ancient world, the Greek, lit, Greek and Roman literature brought new interest in ancient world. Scholars flocked to the universities and adventurers to the new world of America and India and North Pole and South Pole and there the old authority received a death blow in the universities. Truth only was the authority. To search for the truth everywhere has been sought for new lands and gold and the fountain of youth. That was the new spirit which awoke in Europe with the revival of learning. Earlier they read only the Bible, the scriptures and they you know, went on interpreting uh, the Bible uh, from their point of view and this was the learning. But in the modern era, there was new interest in the minds of the people.